The Overwatch League is literally willing to pay teams to leave, and the future of the league is hanging by a thread. So what's going to happen next? How did we get here? And can Overwatch Esports survive? Let's get into it. In its quarterly earnings press release, Activision Blizzard announced it's offering $6 million to franchises looking to exit the Overwatch League. A massive amount of money, totaling up to a potential $114 million buyout for the remaining 19 teams. The report outlines that the future of the Overwatch League will be put up for a vote between the remaining franchises after the conclusion of Overwatch League's sixth season in October. So there is a bit of time to wait before we get anything concrete. But essentially, according to the report, the teams will have to come to terms with an updated operating agreement, and if they don't, they can take the money and be gone for good. It's been a long winding road to get to this point, but truth be told, the Overwatch League has been struggling for a while. And it wasn't just because there was a global pandemic that shut down all offline events, although that definitely sped things up. The League has been in a constant battle to maintain interest pretty much since the end of Season 1, and while there have been peaks and troughs like any eSport, it's hard to look past the crippling Overwatch 1 content drought and delays to Overwatch 2 causing fans of the game to switch off from the pro scene. You can't expect anyone to watch pros battle it out in a game that isn't actively keeping them playing. If they can't be bothered to play, why would they watch others do it? There are clearly a myriad of reasons why Overwatch 2 was so badly delayed, but there was undoubtedly a knock-on effect on the League, and that ultimately lies at Blizzard's door. There's also the very obvious business side of things. In the basis terms, the Overwatch League costs a lot. The League makes up less than 1% of Active Blizzard's revenue, and while I'm not one to say that money is the be-all and end-all, Activision usually is. Beyond the obvious though, there are probably two main reasons why the Overwatch League simply hasn't been as successful as many thought it could and maybe should be. Number one, the decision to franchise and attach teams to specific cities in the hopes that support would be drummed up from locals backfired terribly. In fact, it almost became laughable when some teams were forced to move to different regions than the one they had started in and weren't even playing in the region the city they were named after was in. The pandemic does have to take some of the brunt of the blame for this as well. Covid decimated the Overwatch League's offline event potential. Having every game take place online is a lot better from an ops perspective, but nothing delivers fan hype and expectation like a proper offline slugfest with a crowd and the players sat meters away from it. When the league lost the ability to put itself literally in front of fans' faces, a lot of its potential pull disappeared down the drain. And finally, possibly one of the biggest things the league never managed to pull off was using player personalities to drive more interest in the league they were actually playing in. When you look at other esports, Valorant is a prime example, but League, Rocket League and beyond use their players to drive hype. The Overwatch League never mastered that. The decision to leave Twitch in favour of YouTube also had an impact, undoubtedly, but it was occasionally baffling how little the Overwatch League attempted to harness the community that it had almost begrudgingly built around it. Not enough emphasis was given to streamers, even retired players who had moved into streaming, who could have helped promote and drive fan hype for the league. Co-streaming, for a start, was a massive missed opportunity and practically non-existent. Frankly, it would have put the eyes of viewers who were never going to watch the league unless pushed in front of the screens they needed to be in front of. It would have given the fans who were tuning in only because their favourite streamer was watching the chance to get invested. That's how you build a fan base from the ground up. But the league was never really built on those kinds of foundations. There are a plethora of other reasons why the Overwatch League hasn't worked out how Activision Blizzard wanted, how the fans, the media talent, the casters, the streamers and ultimately the players wanted. But it's hard to look beyond Activision Blizzard's own decision making as the key reason the league as we know it is looking more under threat than ever before. You can only put so much blame on a pandemic which much of the world is, for better or worse, managing to move past. Earlier this month, the Overwatch League announced that the Chengdu Hunters had exited the league, so maybe the writing was already on the wall. Although based on the report, it seems that the Hunters didn't receive the aforementioned $6 million termination fee. The Overwatch League had been subject to continuous downsizing over the years, as it had been unable to meet its ambitious goals to become a global league. Since Season 1, it significantly decreased the number of matches played offline, with only two LAN events in the Mid-Season Madness and the Season Playoffs being organised during this year's season. Is there any surprise that fans' interest has slowly dwindled? For now, the future of the Overwatch League is looking bleaker than it ever has before. Hundreds have already been laid off in Activision Blizzard's esports division, and if the League does collapse in on itself, more job losses will probably follow. And all this comes at the same time as Blizzard admits in the very same report that revealed the $6 million offer to League leavers that engagement and player investment in Overwatch 2 has declined sequentially in the quarter. So is there any reason to be optimistic at all? Well, to end on a slightly brighter note, yeah. There might be. 
The next few weeks and months are going to be incredibly tough for anyone with any skin in the Overwatch League game, but if the league does crumble, you have to hope that a new era of Overwatch esports will rise from its ashes. Maybe a return to the Apex days, to teams that have earned their place at the biggest tournaments rather than paid for a limited number of slots, teams made up of pros and talented amateurs alike clashing for places at the top table, teams that can inspire the next generation of Overwatch players to rise out of their bedrooms and front rooms and onto the biggest stages of them all is exactly what the Overwatch ecosystem needs. For now, we simply have to wait and see what the teams currently in the Overwatch League decide to do. Social media has been flooded by fans sharing their best moments from the Overwatch League's past. And while we don't know anything concrete, the League isn't dead yet. One thing's for sure though, the Overwatch League as we know it will probably never be the same again.